So uh, first I want to talk about some terminology. Uh, virtual reality is uh, a huge concept uh, and it sometimes gets mixed up with uh, augmented reality. So um, let's separate those two. Virtual reality is uh, being immersed in a, in a different reality, just uh, you know, with a head-mounted displays, uh, you know, jack all my senses up to the grid, uh, sense, touch, uh, feel, everything as, as much as you can. And, and this is one school of thought that's probably more geared towards gamers, uh, towards people who want to escape reality, uh, have completely different experiences uh, somewhere else. Whereas augmented reality is a different school of thought. It's more um, get out of my way, I just want something uh, to, to add to my day-to-day -day life, but I don't want anything to get in my way. Uh, Google Glass was uh, not a super success, but uh, the idea there was also to, you know, uh, don't let technology get in the way. Then uh, another different axis is accessibility. Uh, and they're pretty closely related to, uh, to augmented reality and virtual reality. So augmented reality is, is often stuff that's easy to use, easy to pick up. Um, it's uh, very mobile, uh, not clunky. You don't need to set it up uh, a lot. Whereas... Uh, Virtual reality is often tends to more uh, be stationary and uh, uh, a bit of a threshold to set up and get started. Uh, but it's not always the case. Uh, then we also have input. So some of these devices uh, and some of these technologies, they, uh, they come prepackaged with input uh, devices and input channels. So a uh, quick example, which I'm going to get back to, uh, cardboard, for example, Google's uh, cardboard. Uh, virtual reality stuff, where you put in your mobile phone, it virtually just has one input uh, channel, that's one click. Uh, whereas uh, the Oculus Rift, once, like, it, in itself, it doesn't have an input, but you connect it to a computer and uh, you get all the different input devices that you can connect to a computer. And then the last part is cost, of course, um, which is a no-brainer. So let me just uh, do a quick run through of some of the existing technologies and talk about their, um, their main points. So cardboard, uh, most of you have heard of it. Uh, it's very easy to use. The, the school of thought here is really make it really accessible. I mean, this is dirt cheap. Uh, that's the like, main selling point. It's almost free. Uh, uh, and um, is very easy to pick up. It's not intimidating. It looks like an everyday object, but um, it, in, in, in fact, it turns out to be a virtual reality uh, device. Um, it only tracks rotational movement, uh, and as, as I said, it only takes one click, which in this version is uh, the magnetic uh, flipper, which they replaced in the new uh, cardboard with uh, a capacitive uh, little touch button that you press uh, on the top of your forehead, which touches the touch screen on the phone. Django, another Google project. Uh, it's uh, still very much in development, uh, but I do have one with me, so you can all uh, look at that later tonight. Uh, it is handheld. It is a window to a different reality, uh, and I would classify this as augmented reality because you don't get immersed uh, in the, the reality that's uh, showed on the screen. Uh, but um, it does track uh, everything, and it's um, ah, basically, um, you can put stuff in the, in the virtual world. You can scan a room. Uh, there's a lot of different exciting uh, applications for this, and uh, Intel, uh, Intel Sense is a very similar technology, so it's going to be exciting to see how they, um, how they play out against each other. Uh, this is definitely something that's very useful. It's very easy to pick up. It's not intrusive, uh, and you can easily uh, scan your room and see how your furniture fits in and stuff like that. Then we have Microsoft HoloLens, which is a, which is a really cool project uh, because the main thing here is that it's a self-contained system. Uh, this also is very much in development, uh, but um, uh, we'll see where it lands in a couple of years. It is augmented reality, uh, and from what we've heard from user stories, who people have tried it, it's actually very good. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, just by reflecting light off projectors on these uh, visors here, different layers of glass and plastic, uh, and it hits your retina, and it actually feels like a pretty solid object. It's not uh, super transparent as you might have uh, uh, thought when you hear about it the first time. And the Oculus Rift. We can't have a VR talk without the Oculus Rift. Uh, it is the first 
flagship of virtual reality, of this uh, generation of virtual reality. Let's remember that virtual reality has it's a long history. Uh, it's not something new, it's not a fad. Um, I might be skipping ahead on my slides here, but uh, virtual reality has basically, I would argue, has, has existed as long as photography has existed. You can find old pictures online of uh, people taking stereo photography uh, photos from like the, the 19th century. Uh, and you can view them still today, uh, you know, just uh, cross your eyes or take one of these uh, viewers where you just basically like cardboard uh, and look at the picture. Uh, it is fantastic that people from even then wanted to uh, immerse themselves in a different setting, a different reality. Uh, I think escaping from our day-to-day -day life is something very fundamental to the human experience. And um, uh, so it comes and goes in ways, but our expectation is, uh, is very much higher than technology uh, can deliver. And so that's why we've seen these uh, ebbs and flows of virtual reality. Technology has tried to, like enthusiasts have tried to push the limits and, and make virtual reality come to us, uh, but technology has not caught up yet. And I think today what's happening uh, with this continued uh, peak of virtual reality interest is that technology has finally reached some sort of minimal uh, accepted limit for what, what people uh, are expecting and, and what, what technology is delivering. And Oculus Rift was one of the first to, to reach that minimal level. Uh, a different uh, virtual reality headset is uh, Gear VR, which is basically a super jacked up uh, cardboard. Uh, it has more input. Uh, there's a touch uh, pad on the side, so you can get uh, clicks and, and uh, mouse movements and stuff, and you can navigate menus with that. Uh, it is a bit more pricey, of course, as you can tell from the image, even. Uh, and it's also only uh, compatible with one Samsung phone that connects uh, with a connector inside this. So you take this plastic piece off, and then you plug on your phone and put the plastic piece back. The phone recognizes that it's connected to Gear VR, and basically can start your experience. So a very quick sketch of like trying to put these uh, different technologies on the, on the different axes that I was talking about. Immersion, uh, input, cost, uh, and accessibility. And um, without trying to be a fanboy, I think cardboard is very interesting because it's very much on the extreme of both accessibility and immersion. Um, it has almost the same immersion as, as the Oculus Rift, um, at least for the first few minutes, uh, until you realize that uh, for me, for the Rift, it has uh, tracking for, for uh, moving your head, and, and uh, the cardboard only has rotational movement. Uh, so that's definitely gonna, gonna, you're gonna feel that after a while. Um, but, but still, it's, it's super accessible, accessible and um, yeah. And uh, also, let's not uh, forget that we also have, uh, so this is, like, all of these things are consumer side, on the producer side, we have uh, stuff happening also. We have the, um, the newly announced uh, jump rig, which is a uh, super advanced um, a setup of a lot of uh, 16, um, 16 GoPro cameras. Uh, and the interesting here is that they solve the super hard mathematical um, uh, equation or like I'm not, I don't know the details, so please don't ask me. Uh, but um, what they've done basically is that it's not only a 360 spherical panorama that's being filmed, they also get uh, the stereoscopic 3D uh, at the same time as you get the spherical 360. So this stuff, uh, you will be able to film environments and film stuff, and then enter the virtual reality with stereoscopic 3D, and look around and you will see the depth in every, any direction you look at. Uh, so this is definitely gonna be uh, a big content provider and I'm sure one of the first of many uh, like it to come. All right, where to start? So it's actually much easier than you might think. Uh, I think a lot of people, they hear about VR and it's like, okay, whatever, uh, it's uh, like out there, they don't really, they can't really relate to it, how it relates to everyday work. Uh, but uh, I'm sure many of you know that Unity has great support uh, for uh, virtual reality and all of these technologies basically they provide uh, Unity SDKs, uh, which again is easier than you than you think it sounds. At least when you think about SDKs in, in the uh, uh, classical sense, it's it's a bit clunky. These SDKs are just 
asset uh, packages of some scripts and, and a camera that you just drag and drop into your scene, and boom, it's, it works. Um, so it's really easy, and I encourage you all to, even if you don't have these devices, I encourage you all to, to just dip your foot in it and um, uh, download these SDKs, try it uh, with your ex existing Unity projects or open an example project. Just drag one of these assets in and see uh, what it looks like. Uh, you get like uh, a, a fake virtual reality uh, rendering on your screen. Uh, what happens is that the, the camera is rendered to a canvas uh, and with the right and left um, camera on each side. And, and that's what's rendered to the device. So uh, when you look at half the like half screen, one eye and half, uh, half the other eye. So it's not something like you don't have to trick the, the phone into like, okay, this is a, a VR setup, it's, it's stereoscopic. No, like you just render a, a surface uh, with the right and left image. Uh, it's not harder than that. Um, so I encourage you all to, to try that. Uh, the fun thing here, uh, which I will touch upon soon again, uh, is um, so like I said, the setting it up with a like, stereoscopic uh, 3D rendering, that's easy. Uh, what's fun, especially with uh, the devices with more limited input, is uh, coming up with cool UIs and, and ways for the users to interact with the world. Uh, and um, actually, let me get back to that uh, for my showcase. Um, but the, the essence here is that lots can be done. Uh, you're very, very, you have just one click and the, directional, uh, dire the direction of the player's uh, gaze. Uh, so, you know, what, what can you do? And we all know that um, restriction is the mother of innovation. So, so um, that's fun, fun to play around with. To the showcase. So, uh, some of you might have heard that there was uh, a conference or uh, an event at KTH a couple of months back called Tecla. It was aimed for uh, kids to develop uh, technology and just get interested, get them interested in technology. Uh, what Google did, we did a workshop on virtual reality where we uh, created a simple virtual environment and we let the kids uh, sit down uh, and lap by laptops and uh, play around with it, uh, do some simple tasks like create a ball and make it fall down, um, try, to, uh, try to walk around in this world and see what you can find. Um, they loved it. It was, uh, it was a big hit. And um, while develop so we did a lot of work, um, like we didn't want them just get a, a clean slate and then do everything. Um, that was the first step, but then we also like boosted them to, to a more complete environment so they could see something more pretty, uh, which actually wasn't uh, super, like it didn't turn out what, uh, the way we thought because they, they had so much joy in just creating their own stuff from this clean uh, world. So we actually ended up with a lot of different uh, weird worlds, um, not just our own. Uh, but anyway, so when we developed uh, that uh, environment, we, we started thinking about, okay, so, so we only have the player gaze and we only have uh, this environment, but we want to let them move around, but how can we move, let them move around if we don't have uh, input for movement? Uh, so one classical way to do this in cardboard cases uh, is to have an object that the user can look at, and then if they look at it for two seconds, they start walking, and then you look at it again and stop walking. Uh, we did the, uh, the big mistake or the, the ugly, ugly uh, version of it, this crayon big ball in the, in the sky that turned uh, red when you looked at it and was white when you didn't look at it. Um, I'm not very proud of that. Uh, it was super un, uh, uncreative, but uh, it did get us thinking about how to, um, thank you. Uh, how to, how to uh, be creative about these things. And, and uh, one thing that I started thinking about afterwards, like maybe you could have something really smart and, and try to see, try to interpret the place intent. So you could look down on, on, on your arm or your watch and maybe there, you'd see something come up towards your gaze and then you could look at it and then you could turn your gaze away and, and it will fall back. Um, stuff like that. I think um, uh, there's definitely a lot of creative stuff you can do there. So, and, and UI, UI for VR, for limited input VR is, I think that's definitely one like huge thing that where a lot of things can and will happen. So uh, I encourage you again, uh, please go go be those pioneers. Uh, this is what the world looked like that they uh, and there's the big uh, nice ball in the sky that doesn't make sense. Uh, please come and look at this uh, on the showcase if you're interested uh, in more details. Is it worth it? I would say yes, it is. Um, get involved into uh, virtual reality, uh, invest some time 
uh, look up the SDKs. Um, sorry, I need my notes. Look up the SDKs. Uh, like I said, virtual reality is it's not a fad. It's here to stay. Uh, this time around, I don't think it's going to go away. Uh, this time around, it's definitely reached the technology, uh, technological level where the minimum requirement is met for, for at least the early adopters. And that's going to grow more interest. More interest go, grows more developers, and more developers grows more technology. So I think we have just now broken even on the, on the vicious cycle of, no, this is crap. I don't, not, I'm not interested. I'm not going to invest time in this. And it never reached the critical mass before. This time around, uh, it does. Uh, and um, we're going to see, like, even, even if there's a lot more to do uh, on both the, the technological side and, um, and on the innova innovative side uh, with uh, interfaces, uh, it's definitely, I think it's like feeding itself at this point. So uh, it's, it's a race and yeah, please get on it. <laughs>